Okay, before we jump into it, just so you know who everybody is, obviously I'm over here on the right, my name's Austin, and then we have Etta Wright to my left on the near side. Far side left is Hurricane Tyra Black. And then far side right is Elise Jones. Let's hop into this point. We're just going to be analyzing a few points throughout this. Not every single point, but just the points that I feel like will bring the most amount of value. So let's go back really quick to the return. Elise Jones returns, okay? She hits her return cross court. So could be a good strategy to return cross court, could be a bad one, and here's why. If you return cross court, you have the most amount of time. Your ball is gonna be in the air for the longest amount of time because the court, there's more court, cross court than there is up the line. So if she were to return to me, then she has a bigger chance of hitting the ball long and also the net is slightly higher up the line. So she has a better chance of hitting it into the net. So if you turn cross court, you're gonna go over the lowest part of the net, which is the center of the net right here. So returning cross court has so many advantages and especially that amount of time that you have to get forward. The problem is, is they're in a stack. And what a stack is, is where Elise has to return from that left side of her court and then she's gonna go and play on the right side of the court because Tyra plays on the left side. Okay, so now Tyra's on the left side and Elise is on the right side. So if you return cross court, that return has to be deep. You really wanna utilize all of that time to get forward because if it's short like this, Etta steps in, she hits a drive. And as you can see, if Tyra wasn't covering for her, thankfully Tyra did, Elise would be hitting that shot at about mid court and she could only hit it up. So she, then she'd pop the ball up, chances are, Etta would come in and put the ball away. Okay, then the point's instantly over. So the risk and reward is you have to get that return deep, especially when you're in a stack and you have to get all the way forward. Etta does a good job of hitting this return up the line to Elise. This was the right choice here, uh, but Tyra covers and does an excellent job of covering that shot. Had she not, point probably would have ended a lot earlier. Okay, now we're both back and we're looking to move forward into the court. So a ball, ball lands. Anytime you see that a ball lands, you'll wanna take a few steps forward. You don't wanna just rush all the way forward because you need to stop as soon as your opponents hit the ball. So notice how we stop right when Tyra hits this next ball. Ball lands in the kitchen, we move, split, split, and now we're moving forward as much as we can. Ball goes slightly high, I take it, and I should not have. So right here, Etta puts it up slightly high, and now she is going to move towards the middle. It's her job to cover any middle ball here off of her pop-up, and it's my job to cover the line, because if I don't cover the line, who's gonna, right? It's just gonna be a clean winner. So what should have happened is she hits this ball here, I move out of the way, Etta takes this middle ball. She has all the time in the world because she's slightly back from where I am. Instead, I take it, ill-advised speed up. Not the best idea to speed that up anyway. I should have reset it into the kitchen so that we could move forward and start the point over. And then clean winner by Tyra Black. Okay, so this is Etta's ball here. So let's watch the point one more time and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, return comes in cross court. Probably better decision to put it up the line which I wanna show you guys really quick. If Elise puts this ball, this return up the line to me, now it's gonna take my ball a longer time to travel cross court to her. Okay, so she's gonna have an easier time coming forward. So I suggest typically when you're in a stack, the best strategy is gonna be to put that ball, that return up the line as you're going back cross court to your position. Because if you put it, up the line, then it's gonna take this person, in this instance, me, 
a longer amount of time to get the ball on you. Whereas if you leave it slightly short here, you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of that with the drive. Okay, we're in. Got a good point going. We're trying to keep it low. Goes slightly up. I take that ball. Shouldn't have. Okay, this next point that we're going to analyze, we're going to be watching Etta. So she's my partner for those of you that don't remember. She recognizes an Ernie opportunity, and now you guys will be able to recognize the same Ernie opportunity after watching this point. <clears throat> so I return the ball, and notice how my return goes up the middle. My return's pretty trash. It's short, and it's up the middle. Uh, but what's good about it is the fact that it is up the middle. And that's because when I return up the middle, it's the lowest part of the net. The net in the middle is 34 inches, and the net on the sides is 36 inches. So if I return up the middle, I'm going to have a lot less chance of error, first of all. Second of all, it takes away my opponent's angles. So from her position, Elise right now, her option is to drop the ball. She could drop it anywhere that she wanted, but she doesn't have a huge amount of angle that she could drop it on. She could also drive the ball, but she doesn't have a huge angle to drive. So what I mean by that is from the middle of the court, she couldn't hit a drive winner to my right side and she couldn't hit a drive winner to Etta's left side. She really only has the option to hit it at us or up the middle, okay, which we're going to be covering. Whereas if I return this ball cross court, okay, it's still going to go over the lowest part of the net, which is a benefit to me, but Elise could drive the ball down the line now. She could drive it up the middle, and she could also has a way bigger angle to work with cross court. She could get it kind of short maybe into the kitchen with a drop, and just get me off balance instantly. So it automatically neutralizes the point whenever you return up the middle. Okay, she hits this next shot back. She, she drops it up the middle, which is a great drop because it takes away our angles. Etta places this ball nice and short. She's not trying to get it high. She's trying to get keep it at the feet of Elise because if it obviously goes high, then Elise is gonna put the ball away. And now she recognizes that Elise is looking down at the ball. This is a great angle to look at. She's looking down at the ball. Her foot, her outside foot is pointing towards the line. So this is when you wanna jump, okay? Jump for the Ernie. And you'll see that Etta has done this thousands of times because she makes it look effortless, but it's a lot more difficult than this. Okay, she recognizes that Elise's options here is either she's gonna get lucky and get it up the middle or She's going to pop it up the line, which is more likely to happen. She really can't, from this position, get it cross court without popping up the ball. She pops it up, I'm going to put it away. So her only option here is hit it up the line and pray that she doesn't Ernie. She does Ernie, and then she smacks this ball. And Something important to note is two things. Where she hits this Ernie, first of all, she goes up the middle between the two gals. And notice how Elise instantly goes to her forehand side here. Forehand forehand. Okay, so she's covering the line, which is what she should do. And then Tyra is out of position because this all happened so fast. You can't really get into position quick enough because this is Tyra's ball to cover, but she can't possibly cover it because of how, how fast it happened. So the best place to put this shot is going to be up the middle. So great decision by Etta to put it there because Elise has to cover the line. Tyra has to cover the middle, but Tyra's not going to be able to cover the middle in time. Second thing to notice is how I jump over, okay? You don't necessarily need to jump as high as I did. <laughs> that whole half inch vertical right there. But I'm covering for Etta. Etta's off the court, so I'm gonna go to her side of the court because that's where the ball is. But when I land, I'm leaning towards the right side of the court because that's where the ball goes. Okay, that way I'm covering both sides of the court. Okay, on to the next point. Let's watch this one really quick and then we'll analyze it. Okay, so right off the bat, notice where the return goes. We've been talking a lot about the return. I could probably name this return something if I wanted to. But Elise's return goes cross court, okay? This is a really smart return if you're not in a stack. Since they don't switch sides, putting Tyra on the left and Elise on the right, this is a smart return because it's gonna take that ball, this ball from Etta, a longer amount of time to travel to Elise. 
So we always want to be thinking about this whenever we're, we're returning the ball is where should I place the return so that it takes the longest amount of time to get to me and where I'm going to end up. Since she's staying on this side, that makes the most sense. And then Etta lobs this ball. She recognizes both of her opponents are on total offense mode. We're back. They're up at the kitchen. So let's try to get them back. Smart decision, especially if you can execute on it as consistently as Etta can. Okay, gets Tyra back. Now Tyra's back in and now we're all in. Okay, so that kind of got us into the net. So kind of an interesting strategy to get us in. And then we're here. Cross, cross. She pops it up the line. In this position, she at least is looking for an Ernie opportunity because I'm way out wide, but I'm able to keep this ball out in front of me and get it back cross court. With this ball, typically you want to put it back up the middle because that's going to take away the opportunity to slightly pop up the ball to Tyra and her put it away. Thankfully, I was able to keep it down. I felt like I was on good enough balance to get it back cross court dropped it cross court and then I'm reaching into the kitchen here and speeding up this ball. Kind of an interesting speed up. I'm actually cutting underneath the ball, uh, but it's one that I do quite often. I wouldn't suggest it to everybody. I just have, I don't know. It just kind of comes more natural to me on the forehand side to cut under the ball. Notice my speed up location. Okay, it's actually to the backhand of Elise which typically you want to go to their hip, their right hip. But as you can see, Elise instantly goes to a forehand here in this position because they're not expecting it up the line. They're expecting it at that hip, especially at this level. So then she's a little bit late getting to it, pops up the ball and she smacks an overhead. Okay, so let's watch the point one more time and then we'll move on to the next one. Return goes cross, allows Elise to come in they're both on offense. Now we're all neutral. We're trying to move into the kitchen. Point starts over. A little bit of a scramble, put the ball away. Next point, we'll watch it, then we'll analyze what's going on. Okay, lucked out there that she missed that shot. That's pretty rare for Tyra. So, note where the return goes. She's going cross and she's running across. I think it's a lot better decision to go up the line here to me because then she'll have more time to get forward as I talked about before. She's now hitting this next shot at mid court. I should have poached this shot. Had I poached this, the point probably would have been over. So by poaching, I mean I come from my side of the court, run over, and hit a backhand winner, essentially. Because this ball, though it's lower, she gets it kind of down. If I would have just birded that ball, jumped over the kitchen and hit it, points instantly over. So I should recognize this, and we should all recognize this, when our opponents are in a stack and getting out of the stack, okay, and transitioning forward. This ball, they really don't have many options with. So we might as well poach. Okay, next ball is slightly high. We're both back at mid court and we're just trying to get in. So all we're thinking right now is reset, reset, reset. Okay, get the ball to land in our opponent's kitchen. I slide over instead of stealing this ball, which you guys saw in an earlier point, I stole that ball and what happened. And then she drives this ball. So this is what's interesting. You might think it would be, it would make more sense to just drop, but she drives it. So since she has the time, she's kind of in a scramble. She sees that her opponent's hitting an overhead. She has the time to drive it and get it on Elise as quickly as possible. So since she can get it on her so quick, it's going to set her up for an easier drop on the next shot, if not a pop-up. So it does make sense to just drive that. Now Elise is in the defensive position here. She's trying to defend this off of her shoulder. And now we can easily drop this shot. Okay, so it set us up for that. Whereas if she would have dropped this, in this little scramble here, probably would have been a more difficult shot and wouldn't have allowed us to have such an easy drop in this position. So now everything's neutral. We're trying to keep everything low and unattackable. 
and then thankfully Tyra misses that shot. All right, that wraps up everything for this video. If you enjoyed this content, first of all, please be sure to subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And second, comment below if you wanna see part two. I'm gonna go big here and say, if I don't get 400 or more comments, then I'm not gonna do the part two of this video. So if you wanna see part two, be sure to comment and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.